Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 683. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook Excel Magic Trick 683 to 685. 683, we got a great trick here. This is actually uh, from the Mr. Excel message board, and uh, I actually answered the question and posted a formula that didn't work, and I made a uh, Boolean or um, uh, mistake, um, and I want to look at um, what the mistake was and the solution. Now, Barry Houdini at the Mr. Excel message board came in uh, and had a great solution to this problem. Now, here's the setup. We're going to learn something great in this video, how to count, or I'm going to show you how to add and do conditional formatting, three different things based on three and criteria and the third AND criteria contains an OR. So that's this is what that means. The, for the record to be counted, it has to be north. It looks like there's three. And the beginning date has to be greater than or equal to this. So that one's true. Uh, that one's greater than or equal to. That one's e so those are all true. And this column right here has to have a date less than or equal to 8, 2, OR blank. So really, if we look at this one right here, we have a true for north. Uh, this date is greater than or equal to this and criteria. And we need one of these to be true, either or. So this one is less than or equal to that, so that will be counted. But this one, this is true, this is true. Ah, and this is an or, so this is true. Now the mistake I made, uh, we'll see, it's just a slight. Uh, uh, Boolean or adding mistake I made that uh, Barry Houdini came in and corrected. So let's see how to do this. Before we actually do our counting and adding formulas, let's look at an easy way to see how uh, three and with the and criteria, the third one being an or works. We'll build a true-false formula right here. And actually, this formula we build, we'll actually use later to apply conditional format. We'll use the and function. Right? And's great because you can have one, two, three. There's three ands here. If they all come out to be true, then uh, the and will deliver a true. The first thing is, hey, is that cell? And I'm going to lock the row reference because later when we do conditional formatting, we'll need to uh, highlight the whole row. Whenever that is equal to north, I'm going to hit the F4 key. That's the first logical test. Comma, the second logical test is the begin date. Same thing here, I have to lock the, with the F4 key, the column reference, but not, not the row for conditional formatting. Whenever that's greater than or equal to our begin date, F4, lock that one in all direction. Now, comma. This is where the third logical test uh, gets a little tricky, because we have either or. Well, no problem. For the lo third logical test, we'll just use the or function. Now, the or function is different than and. We can, we're going to have two logical tests, and either one of them can come out to be true, or both, and or will deliver a true. So I'm going to say this one right here, and I have to lock it going to the side, column reference locked. When that is less than or equal to our end date, F4, or this one right here, F4, is equal to blank equals double quote is the blank. Now, notice I'm in the or right here. So when I close parentheses, you see that or, its job is simply to deliver a true to this. Even though there's an or, uh, two poss possibilities here, that's all the or is going to do. So anytime this and gets true, logical test, logical one, two, and three, all are true, then and will deliver a true. Double click and send it down. And sure enough, we get exactly what we thought. Now, let's see how to do this with for counting or adding. Now, we have uh, three ands and an or inside the last and. So we're going to use some Boolean um, logic here to get a true true, true, and when you multiply the three trues together, you get a count of one. And so since we're doing that and we're going to create some arrays, we're going to use this sum product uh, formula. The first one we're going to put in parentheses and say, hey, is anything in here equal to north? And then we're going to multiply. So those are a bunch of trues and falses, true, false, true, true, false. Then the next one's going to be any of these dates here greater than or equal to this. 
Again, only when it sees a true and a true will it count one times. And here's where we've got to do our or. Now, in uh, and and or logical Boolean math, multiplying means and, but plus means or. So we're going to do inside of this parentheses two separate logical tests, one for this and one for this. So I'm going to go open parentheses, and then the first one is, are any of these? less than or equal to this one, plus, and then the second uh, parentheses, are any of these equal to blank? Now, this is, the in essence, the form is similar to the formula I posted. I used double negatives, but uh, uh, Houdini used uh, multiplying. But the mistake I made here, made here is I assumed that any record when we're asking this question and this question, these categories were mutually exclusive, meaning we would never get the case where it's both true here and true here. But no way. What does a blank do? A blank, when you do a comparative operator, let's just go ahead and highlight this one and hit the F9 key. You can see it gets a true. And the reason why is we're comparing, we're saying, is this less than or equal to this? Well array compared to this considers this 0. I'm going to control Z. I'm even going to highlight this and hit the F9 key. And sure enough, you can see right there, there's the 0. So when you compare 0 to that, of course that's less. I assume that it would do a blank, which is not correct, control Z. So if we went ahead and did this, it's going to get a true here because we're comparing this empty cell to this, and this is less than that. But it's also blank. So when we do our final count here, we're going to get a 2, so F9, so that 2. And so in essence, we're double counting. No problem. What Barry Houdini said is, no problem. All you got to do is, when it comes uh, to this set of 2, 0, that array, you just say, are any of those greater than 0? Now, notice something. We have some parentheses right there, a plus, some parentheses, and a comparative operator. Now, normally, you think you'd have to put this and this into parentheses like this, separate, so that you can compare all of those uh, 2s and uh, zeros and 1s to greater than 0. But the reason why you don't is because the order of operations in Excel says that this is right near the end. This plus will get uh, evaluated before this does. So we can just leave it like that. In fact, we'll see the, the truth of the matter right now. We'll highlight this and hit the F9 key. And now you can see we get true, false, true, false, false. So that true is no longer a 2, control Z. And by the act of multiplying, when we have a true, a true, a true, it'll come out as 1. When I hit Enter, you get 2. In essence, the formula I did was this. And I just left that out. And so you get a count of 3. Uh, Another way to do this is we could take this, and we could uh, not do the multiplying. We just do our typical double negatives, which for a, a large data set uh, calculates faster. So we just go like this, comma, double negative. All right, I'm adding. What if we wanted to add this column here? Well, we just take this formula right here. And we'd have to add, there's array 3. We'd have to add one more array. We'd simply add that right there. And then Enter. And we get $30. Sure enough, that one and that one is 30 Now, one last thing. Let's go ahead and take this and do conditional formatting. Um, Oftentimes, if you have a complicated true-false logical formula for conditional formatting, it's much easier to do it in the cells. And in fact, we can copy this to the side, right, and then down to check. And sure enough, we get all trues, all trues. So I'm going to take this formula right here, copy, escape, highlight the range. And when you're doing conditional formatting, you want to be sure and know where the active cell is, because you've got to build a point of view from the build the logical formula from the point of view of that cell. So I'm taking that one, and when I Alt 
Alt-O-D, Alt-O-D, new rule right here, here. In earlier versions, you used the uh, first drop down and point to formula is. I highlight that and I'm going to add some formatting. Click OK, click OK, click OK. So now we get our uh, conditional formatting. Also, if we change this to uh, 730, we should no longer get this one anymore. Oh, that's the end date. Escape. We want to change this one to uh, 30, right? Because uh, any this column here has to be greater than or equal to that, and that's no longer true right there. So now we get a count of 1. Notice this one, uh, this mistake formula right here, I should type mistake. Sometimes we'll get the right answer, but other times it won't. It's just when there's a blank, and it really should be uh, these two over here are true, that's when it double counts. But right now it doesn't matter because uh, it doesn't get that over. So it already, uh, the AND function got a false here, so forget it, it doesn't count it. But if this is a record we should count and it's blank, then the formula will not work. All right, uh, we saw counting, adding, conditional formatting with three AND criteria, and the uh, third AND criteria had OR, and thanks to Barry Houdini uh, for some great help there. All right, we'll see you next trick.